What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations of what players to sign for a specific team in career mode before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season obviously you don't have to follow all the tips this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club this is mainly aimed at those you either who move new to the game which need a little bit of advice but well, for those who are out there who want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode of the sign for guys we're going to take a look at the best and most successful team in belgian pro league history no one has won the top tier of belgian football more times than these guys i believe it's 34 league titles for rsc and the let yes from the picturesque city of brussels now playing at lotto park it's a great team to do a fifa career mode with now in the first season what you notice about Anderlet is there's no European football they had a playoff in the Europa Conference League at the start of last season but they lost it so you've got no European football whatsoever at Lotto Park and in the first season as you'll see your objectives are well I'd, I'd say pretty reasonable you know fight for the league title is your objective in season one at Lotto Park and that's not win it, that's fight for it. It's quite ambiguous, isn't it? Fight for it. How do you define that? Well, basically in Belgium, um, it's quite a unique concept for the Pro League. But I think I'm right in saying this. Now, I might be wrong. Belgian football fans, correct me if I'm wrong. But basically, towards the end of the season, um, the, uh, the league gets split into what's a championship round and a playoff round and the points get halved for those teams going into those respective new groups and then they play each team five uh, five times so there's six teams in a championship round six teams in a playoff round and um, you play each team once so five times overall your points are split in half from the original regular season if you will and then of course the winners of that will of course win the league title so yeah it's quite an interesting concept the Belgian Pro League definitely something worth trying if you've never managed in a league before and Anderlet are a great choice. Now, starting off the save, as you'll see, it, it's not the best of teams, I'll be honest here. And there are a couple of decent young talents in the side, but for the most part, it does need some work to uh, doing to it. You've only got a starting budget, again, of around 14.5 mil too. So you've got to be quite sensible in the first season and not blow your budget on one player. That's exactly what I decided to do. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, well, it all really depends on what you want to do with Anderlet, to be honest. You can, you can just bring in a ton of young talent, spend like three, four million a pop on each player, or you can look to bring in a, a star player. And for me with Anderlet, you see the team, they play a 4 4 2. I would recommend a new winger. Um, as you would have noticed, the team doesn't have much of what you call first team quality. If you want to start competing for European honours from season two onwards, if you're going to do that, you need to bring in someone with first team quality now and potential for the future. The main position I'd look to strengthen is on the flank, and the player I'd bring in, well, you know all about him. Of course, Anderlet, Youth Academy graduate, moved on to Stad Rene. I'd bring him back to Brussels. It's Jeremy Doku, uh, 19 years old, and the speedy Belgian winger starts off at 75 overall, but has 85 potential as well. Now, you've got Yari Vacheron uh, on the right-hand side, but I would personally bring in Doku, who has an inside forward on the left, and sell Rafaelov, who's an Israeli who is 35 or 36 years old I think he is and he's going to decline in the first season as well so the Israeli winger is definitely someone I'd look to get rid of in the first season you won't be able to sell him as he's just come in but you can swap him out of the club now, in terms of sales of Anderlet, once again, you'll notice quite a few players have just arrived here. And in terms of money you can raise, there's not a lot of it to gain because the players that you'd probably want to sell in the first season don't have much in terms of market valuation. We did sell our Ukrainian left back, Mike Kalikenko, uh, to Brentford for £2.5 million. But obviously, that's not a great deal of money. And yeah, you're not going to get much for the players you've got here at Anderlet. The player to replace him with is actually several ratings lower than Mike Alikenko, the Ukrainian. But as you've got Gomez, who's literally just come in for season one, he's the Spanish left back who has 72 for a starting overall, but a really solid potential in the low 80s. You don't really need a good backup left back to compete with him for first team football. I would just recommend a young Belgian talent with a poor starting overall, yes, but a very young age and a good potential for the future. The guy I'd recommend is this guy right here. It's Donny of St. Truden. Um, this guy starts off at a low, low rating of just 59 overall, but 
He's only 17 years old. This guy is fresh out of school. He's got really solid potential at 81. And he's a sort of player that, again, in the first couple of seasons, he'll be lowly rated. He won't get many minutes on the pitch. But again, because Gomes has just come in, 72 overall, you don't need a player to compete with him as a first-choice left-back because 72 overall is more than good enough for the Pro League. And he's got 81 potential, I think it is, as well. So, yeah, you just need someone for the future, really. That's who we got in Donny. And again, he's much cheaper than Michael Akenko. So we raise around £2 million in terms of a net gain there, if you will, for the sale to Brentford and the signing there at a teenage Belgian. And go with 81 potential. He'll grow really nicely for the future as well. Um, in terms of other signs of Anderlecht, once again, not much money to work with in the end. But we did indeed manage to sign a new centre-half. Uh, we got Danilo Doki, who I recommend for a lot of career modes where you're looking for a budget centre-half. A good starting overall and OK potential as well. We did manage to swap out Rafaelov, the Israeli wing we mentioned earlier at 36 years old he's going to decline rapidly in the third season so in my opinion despite the fact he's 36 overall and has a good starting ability just just swap him out of the club as soon as possible he's going to plummet in rating just like that but Danilo Doki we signed him for two mil uh, plus Rafaelov, of 23 years old but 74 overall now Anderlet do have quite a lot of center halves here and some good youngsters as well there's one on loan from Ajax right now too but to me I think you need some of a good starting overall to begin with and also potential as well Danilo Doki meets that he's 23 years old he can go right in the first 11 alongside Wesley Hoot and he'd be a really solid center half for now but also with 80 potential for the future as well. He's one of the best budget center arts you can get in this game for a league like the Pro League. Um, so with the little money we had remaining, around 3 to 3.25 mil, I did decide to try and sign a new central midfielder. Um, one recommendation I have is this guy, though the problem you'll find if you're managing in a league like the Pro League where the weekly wages aren't the highest, is that you might be able to find players like this who are available on cheap deals. But their salaries, my goodness, they're, they're just way too high for the Pro League. We negotiated a £3.1 million deal with Real Madrid for Antonio Blanco. He's got 83 potential and he'd be a brilliant budget CM to bring in. But his weekly wage at the Bernabeu is 43 and a half grand a week. He would blow up your wage budget at Anderlet. So to me... I wouldn't personally recommend doing that. Whilst in the future, he might be worth that salary. He'd be your highest earner in the team by quite some distance. I, instead, would look for younger talents on much lower salaries. So if you want to blow up your wage budget for one player, Antonio Blanco wouldn't be a bad option. 71 overall means he can probably go right in the first 11. And he's got 83 potential as well. But to me, I personally would look to build for the future, bring in younger talents on much lower salaries that won't destroy your weekly wage. Bill. Um, so one player I'd recommend is Luca Oyen. You might have seen this guy play FIFA career because he grows really well. He's an 18-year-old right now at KRC Gang. 67 overall, so not the highest, but he's got 85 potential. This guy turns into an absolute monster as the years go by. And one of the reasons why this guy's a great pickup is because his deal is up come the end of the year. So you can get him for under the valuation. We swapped out our backup goalkeeper plus a small transfer fee for this guy. And again, at just 18 years old, he's only a year younger than Doku. Yes, he's eight ratings lower but they've got the same potential so in the future you'll have three great Belgian wingers Jeremy Doku, Yari Vasharin, and also Oyen as well and what you can do as well is move Vasharin into the middle as time goes on as a playmaker so the final signing I picked up was a new central midfielder we might have missed out on Antonio Blanco due to his ridiculous wage demands but this guy's a really good B option if you will Belgium have some really good young CMs you've got Matazo uh, you've got Sambi Lokonga who of course has moved on to Arsenal this guy pretty decent as well. It's uh, Nicholas Raskin of Standard Liège. He's 20 years old, 70 overall, so not the best, yes, but at just 20, he's got a long way to go. You can get him for around a valuation, or maybe just under that as well, around two and three quarter million. He's on a low weekly wage, far lower than Antonio Blanco as well. And what I love about this guy, really versatile. 82 stamina, that's his best stat. High, high work rates, you know I love that. The solid player trait in a four-star weak foot, what's not to love? Very, very versatile player can sit deeper be a little bit further forward or right through the heart in the middle of the park this guy's really versatile and a great option to bring in so uh, for Anderlet and Neil we only sold the one player Mike Alikenko going to Brentford for two and a half mil we swapped out Kuzman's uh, to KRC Genk for Koyan as well and as you'll see here the talent coming in Raskin and Doku coming in 
There's young Belgian talents um, that can, uh, for Doku, uh, starting this team of Raskin off the bench, but also Danilo Doki coming in to improve the back four, and then Donny as a new backup left back as well. Once again, Anderlet's a great challenge because there's very little money to work with in the first season. So you can't really bring in a couple of superstars, but you can improve the team and make it better and also make it much younger for the future as well. It's an RTG of Anderlet. You know, you've got in European football in season one. So, yeah, definitely build for the future. That is my. My main piece of advice so as per usual we'd simulate to the end of season see if we would hit those objectives and as you can see well we we're asked to win the league title and reach the quarter final of the cup and you love to see it sorry we we're asked to challenge the title we we in the end as you'll see didn't even make the championship round um, in the, uh, in the two playoffs as I go through the uh, second round of fixtures here. Um, it was it was quite poor, I'll be honest, in the league. I thought we'd do much better than we did. But you would have seen there briefly. I came back early to show you that we did win the Crokey Cup. As you'll see in the end, the league standings were very poor indeed. Um, as you'll see, we play uh, six games in the end. I, I think I totally messed it up earlier. Sorry, it's a unique concept to me. But um, yeah, you played uh, just four teams and then there's six games you play each other three times but as you'll see we missed out on the championship round um, only to be fair only just finishing in fifth place we weren't too far behind but because we dropped into the playoff round that would mean our league objective was a failure in order for the uh, league objective to be hit which is again fight for the league title you need to finish in the top four which puts you into the championship round so we only missed out by two points in the end but it would still be considered a failure as for the croaky cup we were asked to reach the quarterfinal stages and in the end as you would have seen we went all the way to win it we beat KAA again in the final to win the Crokey Cup I think Anderlet have won it the second most amount of times in Belgian football but the league objective was a failure of course dropping in to the playoff round but the cup was a giant success winning the Crokey Cup and I believe that the Crokey Cup in Belgium gives you a qualifying place in the Europa League for next season might be wrong about correct me if I'm wrong Belgian football fans as you can tell my knowledge of Belgian football is not the best but even so we won the croquet cup and that means we far exceeded our cup objective things you love to see but it's a great team to do a career mode with obviously they've got a new manager in for the new season after the uh, vincent company stint with very little money to work with it's a tough challenge in season one having to fight for the league title with several good belgian teams to battle with and again it does need a bit of a rebuild. There are some aging players here. There are some players who aren't the best. There are some players in their 30s that you will want to shift on. And whilst there are a couple of decent young talents for the future, for the most part, if you want some high potential young players, you got to buy them yourselves, you know. <laughs> and Jeremy Docker is one of those players that I definitely would recommend. It, it's a great team, though, you know, no doubt about it. In recent years, they've obviously lost their stronghold on Belgian football, but they've won the league title in Belgium more times than any other club. You're in the picturesque city of Brussels. You've got some fabulous kits. I love the purple. But, yeah, it's definitely a career mode I'd recommend. It's a good challenge. It's an RTG, no doubt about it, because in the first season, Andalet aren't even playing in European competition. But it's definitely worth a go for a good challenge an RTG a rebuild and with Belgium having so much young talent you know for sure as the years go by you can have a lot of that here at Lotto Park but that will end today's episode of the time for guys big thank you for watching hope you have enjoyed if you haven't please do drop a like much love to you all have a fantastic day and I will see you for the next episode of who to sign for very soon